The first step in getting ready to code cut a General Motors key is preparing the key blank. One side of your GM setup key has number one cuts down the entire length of the key as well as an angled tip cut. What we'll basically be doing in this step is duplicating a key. We're going to duplicate our setup key onto our key blank. If you plan on doing a lot of GM code cutting, you could buy pre-cut key blanks from HATA, which would eliminate this step. Be sure to use the proper side of the setup key. Do not use the side that has the number 4 cut at the head of the key. We'll assume you've already gone through the cutter and guide alignment procedure. Insert the setup key into the left vise using the handheld tip stop to align the key. Tighten the key into the vise. Position the carriage so that the guide is above the channel in the setup key. Pull the feed handle down making sure the guide enters the pre-cut on the key. Completely compress the guide. You should not be able to pull the carriage down any further. Tighten the large knob in the front of the machine to hold the carriage in this position. Next, turn the dial on the upper left of the machine to the 10 position. By turning the dial at the upper left of the machine, we've given ourselves 10 thousandths of clearance between the guide and the key. Lift up on the guide and lock it into this position with the lock nub on the left side of the machine. We've now eliminated the spring pressure on the guide and can move our carriage back and forth easily. We're now almost ready to duplicate our key. Insert a blank key into the right vise using the tip stop to align it. Tighten the key into the vise. We're now ready to duplicate our setup key cuts onto our blank key. Turn the machine on. With any key that is cut internally, we'll start our cutting at the right tip of the key, work our way up the right side of the key, and come back down on the left side of the key, making sure to copy the angled cut at the tip of the key under the blank. We only need to make one pass up and down the key blank. Now we'll flip our key blank over and perform the exact same procedure on the opposite side of the key. One thing to keep in mind when removing keys from the vise, it is extremely important to keep the vises clean and that no shavings get beneath the key blank. Again, on internally cut keys, our cut begins at the right tip of the key, work your way down the right side of the key, and back down the left side of the key, making sure we get the angled tip cut. Here is what our pre-cut key looks like. If you'll be cutting a large number of General Motors key blanks, HATA also can supply you with pre-cut keys. Our first step in code cutting a key is to install our GM depth and space rods. Since our rods are already adjusted, Simply insert the rod into the end of the machine, insert the Allen wrench into the locking hub hole, and rotate the space rod until the hub engages. Continue turning the space rod until it comes to a complete stop against the hub. Be sure to replace the Allen screw in the locking hole to prevent chips from getting inside the carriage of the machine. We'll do the same with the depth rod on the right side of the machine. Insert the rod into the machine. Insert our 332nds Allen wrench into the locking hub hole. And rotate our depth rod until it comes to a complete stop against the hub. Again, be sure to replace your Allen screw in the table to prevent chips from getting into the carriage. We'll need to raise the guide and lock it into the upper position so that it doesn't contact the left vise as we're trying to code cut our key. Next, we'll insert our pre-cut key into the right vise using the tip stop to align it. Use the thumb screw to tighten the key into the vise. Next, we'll engage our depth rod. Tighten the thumb screw, 
When it's properly tightened, our carriage should move left and right easily when we rotate our depth rod. Engage our space rod in the same way. Tighten the thumb screw. When engaged properly, our carriage should move forward and back as we turn the space rod. We'll use our pre-cut General Motors key to set our depth of cut. Pull our feed handle down until our cutter touches the groove in the key blank and tighten the large lock knob in the front to lock the carriage in this position. We use our generic code program to look up our key code. From the main menu, click on the vehicle section. At this screen, we'll select our make, which would be Chevrolet. From the model menu, we'll pick Camaro. And from the year menu, we'll pick a 2010. The program shows us that this model uses a Z code series. We'll go to the bottom left corner and click Code to Cuts, and we'll enter in our code of Z5003. This screen now shows us a variety of information we can use. If we weren't sure what cutter and guide we used, it shows us here that the GHCB093 and GHMS093 cutter and guide are to be used, along with Vice Set A, and that the key is a tip stop key. It also shows that we use the GM depth and space rod. Most importantly at this screen, it shows us that our cuts from the head of the key to the tip are 132, 124, 34. Now that we know our cuts, we're ready to start cutting our key. Turn the machine on, turn our depth rod to a number one position, and turn the space rod until we're at the number one space position. The first cut on our key is a number one depth. We're at the head of the key in a number one position, so this cut is already made. Our next cut is a three depth, so we'll turn our space rod to a number two position and our depth to a three depth. Be sure to grab the space rod firmly as the cutter will try to pull the carriage away from you occasionally. Always remember, if your next cut is deeper, turn your space rod first. If your next cut is shallower, turn the depth rod first. If this procedure is not followed, you will miscut your key. In our third position, we have a two depth, so turn your depth rod to a number two, then turn the space rod to the third position. In our fourth position, we have a number one depth, so again, we'll turn our depth rod first, then our space rod to the number four position. This time, our next depth is deeper, a number two depth, so we'll turn our space rod first, then turn the depth rod to a number two position. Again, our next depth is deeper, so we'll turn our space rod to the number five position, then turn our depth rod to a number four depth. Our next depth is shallower, a number three, so we'll turn our depth rod first to a number three, then turn to our seventh space position. Our last cut is deeper, so we'll turn our space rod to the number eight position, then turn a number four depth. Leave the key in this number four depth position, and turn the space rod back to the key load position. Turn the machine off. The first side of our key is now complete. Turn the key over, reinstall it in the vise on the second side, and repeat the same procedure again. 